Hello and welcome back and today I want to return to the subject of unofficial memory upgrades for your Synology NAS. Before we go any further though, let's make this abundantly clear and I know you guys hate disclaimers but let's be realistic here. What we are talking about in this video and the videos that follow about memory upgrades, we are talking about unofficial memory. We are talking about things where we are utilizing these devices and upgrading these devices in ways the manufacturer does not support. Uh, go, if something goes wrong, they're not going to be able to support you taking advantage of an unsupported configuration. So by doing this, remember you are doing a thing that could put your data at risk. And just like my other videos, the reason I'm doing it today is just in case you don't have to. Okay, so today's video is me looking at the unofficial memory upgrade for this device from a company called TimeTech. Now, in my first generation of these videos, I used Crucial Memory. And one of the reasons I used Crucial Memory was largely just because it's the only brand I've ever really used. And I was building PCs and laptops, or in the early days of when NASes didn't have their own first party memory suppliers, Crucial Memory was one of the ones I saw more and more being utilized. And therefore, I kind of was drawn to that one. But it would be remiss of me not to highlight the fact that there are other memory you know, providers. You can get ones from Kingston, ones from Samsung, and there's a bunch of other brands as well, which have got sub brands and things like HyperX. And then you have got brands like these, TimeTech, which are kind of lesser known brands that have produced memory modules, which don't really have the reputation of the big boys out there, but are generally like another company, Adata, they have got memory inside a number of devices we use every single day. But we don't see it because it's kind of a slightly off brand. Now, right now on Amazon, you can get hold of memory just like this quite affordably. Now, the 920 has an official memory limit of 8 gig. Indeed, the CPU inside has an official memory limit of 8 gig. The 920 arrives with 4 gig of memory that is soldered to the internal board, which you will see if you looked at my dismantling video of this device. So there is an, still an extra sodium DDR4 memory slot. Now, you can use the official memory, of course. It is a 4 gig Synology module. It's been tested on Synology NAS, and it's available from Synology but it's not the cheapest. At 4 gig, it retails for about £90 shopping around, and that's for a 4 gig memory upgrade. Now, I can see why a number of you would want me to test these, because the 8 gig module knocks around for about 35 quid, and that's 8 gig, and the 16 gig module for about 60 odd quid. So 60 quid for 16 gig, or 4 gig for 90, um, 4 gig for 90 pounds from Synology, that's quite a big disparity. But once again, what we're going to be doing today is we've already installed DSM on this device. We've got a couple of drives and an SHR. We've already got it up and running with its standard 4 gig. We've then powered the device down. And then one by one, we're going to install the 8 gig module. And then we're going to install to see if it works. And then if that works, we're going to install the 16 gig module. Now, a few things to bear in mind during this test. Much like all the other memory that I've been utilizing in my unofficial memory upgrades and testing, I have conformed to the uh, preset parameters. Make sure you are using DDR4 memory in the case of the newer generation 20 plus series NAS, such as the 722, 24, 2920. Make sure it is at least 2400 megahertz, but ideally 2666 megahertz. Make sure it is non-ECC, because this system can't take advantage of that. It's a bit pointless. Make sure it is dual rank. Now, this is very important. Dual rank memory is when all the modules on the memory chip are located all the way around the uh, front and back with each of those individual little chips holding a certain amount of memory. Dual rank allows both sides of the memory module to be utilized. And the system seemingly has difficulty with um, cells that are larger than two gig Per cell and when you have a single rank for example 16 gigabyte module that means each of the little chips are just too big so bear in mind to go for a dual rank sodium module there's still no guarantee and this is going to work and as you can see these are completely sealed i've not utilized these yet so it will be interesting to see what happens when we install both of these modules let's get that first one out that's the 16 gig module and the 8 gig module as well. And what we're going to do is install the 8 gig as mentioned. Then we're going to boot this device up. 
and then from there we're then going to check DSM double check the memory scene you may even run a memory test at the end of the video and I'll show you guys how to perform a memory test as well and then we'll power the device down if it's successful and then switch over to the 16 gig module okay so let's go ahead with the installation we've got our 8 gig module there as you can see it's dual rank there's chips on either side so we'll pop that there and then remove the two bays that are blocking the memory module slot in the Synology. And as you can see there, that little dip there in the metal frame, that is where our memory module goes. And I'm gonna position it there. Make sure we align the sodium uh, slot pins with the ones available on the system. Slot it in. And remember, this is the eight gig, 35 pound module. Make sure both of the small arms are locked in on either side of that memory and make sure that's in there. And that's about it, really. What we're gonna do now is move this over to the test area, get it plugged in, and then I'm gonna to switch to the screen recording area there, which is gonna show us DSM, hopefully, and the availability of that memory. And if it works, as I say, power down, 16 gig, and then we'll test that one out. And regardless of what happens, before the end of the video, do stick around for the bit where I show you guys how to perform a memory test to make sure your memory is at least working functionally. Okay, let's switch over to the screen. Right, so good news, it does look like we can get into the DS920 with the 8 gig module of TimeTech memory installed. I've done a scan after the device booted up and it appeared and I've logged into it as so. And if you need a little bit of proof there, let's log out of the device. You can see there it's already on the IP 1681110. It's the same IP there. We can log straight in just like normal onto this DS920 and go into it. Now, as mentioned, uh, the memory modules we are trying are is the 8 and 16 gig module. Do bear in mind that, again, it's available worldwide. And I have got a few areas on the website, and maybe in the description below, where I have done links to the memory that I run in today's test, as well as other tests as those videos happen. But bear in mind that Amazon has a real funny thing when it comes to selecting pages. And if a memory area or one of these memory modules is not available, don't be surprised if Amazon redirects you to one that is. So I strongly recommend that you triple check that you are buying these particular models if you choose to emulate the test today. Just remember, DDR4 2600, two rank or dual rank memory, make sure those are the parameters. Non-ECC, so you don't want ECC memory, make sure those are the ones you go for. But if we have a look here, we can go into some of the traditional areas where it will at least display some of the settings. So if we come out of that one, we'll go into the control panel. And from the control panel, we can have a look at the systems information center, find out more about what it says. And as you can see, it is rating now at 12 gig of memory. So that's the four gig that it arrives with by default. And now the added eight gig of time tank memory there, the DDR4 memory. If we go into the resource monitor, we can have a look in there, have a quick look and see what the overview shows us. And it will take a few extra seconds for it, things to start regging on the memory there. But we can go into the CPU there and we can see lots of information on the CPU. But as you can see, the memory monitor, there isn't any of the graphical inconsistencies that we have seen with some unofficial memory that always is a bit of an alarming thing. But there is our 12 gig of memory showing how much is cached and how much is available. And you can go into the task manager there and see just how much certain memory is being utilized by different apps. As you see there, lots of different apps and how much memory they're utilizing. Now, if we go into the virtual machine manager, we can see if we can actually allocate this storage. So let's create a, a generic VM area there. Let's create one. And we've got a VM test there already pre-made, in fact. So let's go ahead and edit this VM. And the memory, if we click down, we can now go all the way up to 12 gig. So let's give this a nice comfortable eight gig of memory. Go from there, click OK. And now that memory, if we power on that VM, should now register that memory allocation being taken by Synology's Virtual Machine Manager. Now, bear in mind that Synology's Virtual Machine Manager tool is actually quite intelligent in the way that it shares memory um, as and when it's being utilized. You can already see that the memory has been allocated now there on the screen and on the Virtual Machine Manager. It's allocated that eight gig of memory and if we go into the VM, which will be booting right now, that VM has now got the eight gig pre 
allocated. Now there are other things you can do to test if memory's working, you know, run a docker and stuff like that, but the majority of ways in which you will see it will always be within the performance monitor. And there's only certain areas of the Synology DSM platform where you can pre-allocate memory. So we can run a bunch of apps and stuff and it'll be on there, but this video isn't really about long-term burn testing. That's something we're going to be running uh, for the follow-up video to the Time Tech uh, memory segment. But if we go in there, the VM's still booting there in the background. And again, this is a pre-recovery VM that we were running off of, I believe, an i5, possibly an i7 uh, image, which we transferred over. So, of course, we're running it now on two cores of a Celeron processor. But as you can see, the VM is running and it is still doing everything we need it to do in the background. And we've still got that other memory available. Remember that I've assigned eight gig of memory to this NAS that you know, generally had four gig to start with. So what we're gonna do moving forward now is we're going to power down this NAS, and then from there, we're going to go ahead and start installing the 16 gig module. Now, rather than talk on screen, let's be honest, you've already seen me install the memory, you know how this works. So either after this, you are going to see me log back into DSM, or you're gonna see a picture of me with a sad face looking at the camera telling you why nothing worked. And then after that, I'll show you guys how to bench test memory. But let's fast forward now to the installation of the 16 gig module from TimeTech. Right, so once again, good news. We've loaded it up and it has recognized the TimeTech 16 gig DDR4 dual rank module. We're back on this and I've done things a little bit different this time. I've made sure that that VM is up and running first. So that means we'll be able to go into the VM and take a few little checks there to make sure everything's running fine. Uh, with the VM there before, because we're only assigning um, two gig uh, sorry, two cores of the memory to quite an astounding amount of storage there. It does result in a lot of the kind of fluidity of that VM being slowed down. This is nothing to do with the memory or indeed the Synology. It's just I'm running a VM that's way, way bigger than it should be on this system. This is a Windows 10 Professional, I believe, VM. But as you can see, I have allocated now a huge amount of memory. I've allocated 16 gig to this VM this time around. So if we go in, we can have a little look and have a look at some of it. There we go. The host memory is 20 gig. I've made sure to assign 16 gig of this one. And again, 16 gig memory, two cores. If we make our way into the resource monitor, you can see there when I turned on the VM, the VM there, so we, we got it at the beginning there and I turned on the VM and then boom, there is the memory being utilized there. And then of course we can have a little look round about the swap outs of memory, but that's not really relevant to what we're doing. We can look at the main overview there, which is showing it's all being utilized. If we go into the control panel, we can see rightly that there is the 20 gig of memory being utilized there, uh, the 20 gig of memory visible. And of course over here, because we've utilized two of the four CPU cores in this VM, as well as 16 gig of that memory with the system utilizing a good chunk of memory for itself, we can see why the memory utilization is all the way up to 91%. If we go into that VM, we can go to the bottom and open up the task ma uh, the task manager. And from there, we should be able to see that this VM has now got that 16 gig of memory pre-allocated. So if we go into it there, we look at the processes at the moment. Obviously, the VM is much bigger than these two cores that I've given it is sufficient for. But there is the 16 gig of memory right there available to the VM on this 920 system. So for now, let's shut down that VM uh, because, again, as much as I want to say that this is a success, once, once again, we have to state that what we've done here is a test. And this is not the way that the Synology Now system was designed to be utilized. And therefore, you are taking the odd risk by doing this. And I just want to make sure you guys are pre-informed. Now, if you are going to do stuff like this, I do recommend that you take advantage of the memory test facility built into Synology's Assistant tool. So if you have installed Synology Assistant on your system, which is probably the easiest way, you can see that the memory's just been flushed there uh, as it's been freed up via the VM and it's shooting right back down. But on the Synology Assistant tool, head up to the little icon there for configuration. 
and you'll see a tick down there that allows you to enable advanced services. And the one to look for there is memory test. Put the tick in the box, click OK, and then highlight the NAS that you're going to be utilizing. And then from there, a new option appears when you right click it that says memory test. And this will perform a memory test of that NAS. It will perform an internal diagnostic check and then it will, you won't be able to access the system while it does it, and it will do a reboot. And then depending on the size of the memory, it will limit how long it takes. I've done these before and they've taken five minutes. Some of them have taken upwards of uh, a few hours. So it is worth bearing that in mind. But once you run that memory test, it's quite useful to know and doing periodic memory tests on anyone or on any system that's gonna be using unofficial unsupported memory. And again, I do recommend doing this anyway and on a NAS with even official memory because you never know, particularly with non-ECC memory, whether an inconsistency has happened in the background as some kind of silent killer. But this is now going to set about restarting the NAS in just a moment. But for now, I'm going to end the test here. Do visit the link in the description where there'll be links to this memory to make sure you've got the right one. And there will be a link to the NAS Compare article where I have gone through lots of different unofficial memory modules and which ones work and which ones don't so there will be all the different ones there again samsung kingston time tech and more are all listed in that article so i do recommend you check that out but otherwise thank you so much for watching i hope you guys have enjoyed this video i will be bench testing the other synology nazis in this particular 2020 family and updating them here on youtube and on nas compares do check those out but otherwise thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time